Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video is all about how to do your CPK, PPK when your data is not normal. We're going to be answering a viewer's question who sent me a query and they want to do some transformation, log normal, maybe use the viable distribution, etc. So we're going to talk about how you would deal with the fact that your data is not normal. Now, before we get into today's video, great news. A new book has been released today, The Seven Quality Tools for World Class Problem Solving. If you want to support the channel, go and buy the book. It's brilliant for people who are trying to form quality teams, do 5S continuous improvement activities, etc., like that. Sort of le yellow belt level, uh, problem solving, fantastic new book. The link to lulu.com is in the description below. So with that out of the way, let's get on to today's video. So we're gonna talk about what do I do if my data is not normal? So, how to do CPK, PPK. We'll talk about non-normal generally, all right? So, for non-normal data. Now, the example that I'm discussing, they've actually said to me, that the reason why the data is not normal is because there is a brick wall, one end of the scale that they are using. So this would be typical for something like concentricity, for example. So if you're measuring concentricity, zero, of course, is the lowest you can get. And then what you tend to get is you tend to get this distribution which maybe looks like this. If you fit a normal distribution to it, it's suggesting that you've got data out there, which is a bit weird. And especially if you tell it that this is the tolerance, you will definitely get a reject rate out here, which clearly doesn't exist. So what's the solution when this is happening? And as I said, the um, uh, the person that sent him the information, he said, could I fit a log normal? Could I fit the viable? All right, so there's the two suggestions that he's making. Now, okay, look, we need to just go common sense principles. When you do CPK, PPK, what is the analysis trying to do? All right, well, what the analysis is trying to do is predict your defect rate. Okay, so rather than observing the defect rate, you're trying to predict, you're especially trying to predict maybe data that you haven't seen that's a little bit more extreme and therefore your observed defect rate is always going to underestimate reality. And that's why we use CPK and PPK, because it is a better estimate of what's going to happen. And this is the crucial point. You are generating an estimate of your reject rate when you switch your machine on. That's what this tool is for. So whenever you use a distribution to, um, to evaluate the defect rate, you should always ask the question, is it a good estimate? Is that a good estimate of what's happening? Now, this is why we do the mathematical test, or some people do the mathematical test. Personally, I don't. They check to see if this distribution is normal or not. And if it's not normal, they decide not to use it. Quite honestly though, it could still be giving you the best estimate of your defect rate. So although it's not normal, it doesn't mean you discard it and you don't use the CPK and the PPK. 
you are looking for the best estimate of what's going on. So there is a number of things that you could do to make yourselves happy with the estimate. So let's go through a few of the things that you could do. The first one is you fit the normal distribution, but you will omit the zero as a tolerance. So you just put this point in here as a tolerance. Now, obviously what happens is the CPK just evaluates the reject rate for the right hand tail. Now what you're doing is you're looking at the data versus the fit. If the data versus the fit looks reasonable, then maybe it's a good estimate of what's going on. Okay, so one is that you put a one-sided, I'll call it the one-sided normal. Okay, and what we're asking the question, is the estimate, let's put it like this, is the estimate sufficient? Let's not think of it as accurate, but let's say sufficient. So for instance, this here, if this was telling me I had a 12% defect rate, is this, is this evaluation sufficient? And you might look and you might go, well, I think it might be overestimating the defect rate a little bit, but I'm certainly in this range somewhere. I'm probably around eight to 12% defect rate. Now this is new product introduction. This is a bloody awful result. What are you gonna do next? Well, you're gonna fix it. Whether the number said eight or 10 or 12 or seven, it's crap. The, the action and the reaction is the same in every situation, fix it. So in this case, if that was the, the number that came up, I'd go, that's a sufficiently accurate estimate. I don't need any more data than that. I need to do something about it. Let's not sweat the fact that the estimate might not be the most accurate in the world. Whatever number I come up with is going to drive me to improve this process. So that's action number one. So you can see these are practical considerations, not statistical considerations. Number two, use the observed defect rate. Now you don't get this on every piece of software. I know Minitab definitely does it. So if for some reason what you had was you had your distribution, which was slightly slightly skew if like this. Let's say you added a distribution to it. Let's say there's your defect rate. Clearly the estimate is this tail and the distribution is clearly missing a bucket load of defects sitting out to the right. It's clearly underestimating the defect rate. Well, a better thing to do is to simply use the observed defect rate. It's going to be a better estimate than the distribution. So again, it, it doesn't matter whether you fit the normal, the viable, the log normal, you're always asking that question. Does the distribution, does it look like the distribution's giving me a good estimate of what's going on? And so it doesn't matter what, um, what uh, distribution you fit, if you think it's underestimating, Go to the observed, go to the observed value instead. It'll be a better estimate. And again, same thing is true though. Is the estimate sufficient? You know, if the estimate is down around, you've got the opposite, of course. If the estimate looks like this and it's saying there's no defect rate at all and your data 
looks as if there is no defects going towards the tolerance here. The fact that the defect rate says oh, I've got a CPK of 1.6 and I've got a defect rate of 1 in 100,000, is that accurate? You might decide it's not accurate, but again, it's sufficient. I don't have any risk of making defects. I don't need an accurate CPK. You've got to be asking yourself, what am I using this thing for? Do I need the best, best, best estimate? Am I going to spend hours trying to do this? And if the answer is no, get the number you need, make a great decision and move on. Be practical. So you could use the observed defect rate. Now these would be my two preferred methods. This, this is typically what I would do. Um, I don't have a tendency to fit uh, an, another distribution. Okay, but this is number three. Fit another distribution. Okay. Now he doesn't say in the question and the information that he's sending me whether he is transforming the data to do the log normal. I don't think he'd have to transform the, the data to do the viable. But he would be my, my suggestion to you. If you fit another distri distribution and it's a good estimate, go with it. The advice though, avoid transformations okay avoid transformations the reason why I want you to avoid transformations when I do this evaluation is it a good estimate I can see the individual data distribution versus the theoretical distribution I can judge for myself if that's a good estimate if you do a log normal transformation of this and maybe you turn it normal then you drop a tolerance on there which is also going to have to be log normal you drop a tolerance on there and you work out the defect rate now what you're looking at is not the original data you're not looking at the real values how do I evaluate whether I've got a good estimate or not I can't I'm just relying on I don't know, black magic? I've no idea. What am I relying on when I do a transformation? I avoid transformations. So by all means, fit another distribution. The evaluation is the same. Is it a good estimate? Am I overestimating, underestimating my defect rate? And is the estimation sufficient? Because if you've got a big defect rate, the decision's always going to be the same fix it. If the defect rate is tiny, the decision is always going to be the same. Run the process. The time when it gets a little bit dicey is if you've got a, maybe you've got a, a tolerance here and you're not sure whether the defect rate is going to be big or small. And now you don't know whether you can run the process. That's the only time that this is going to cause you a problem. What would I be doing then? I'd be definitely using the observed defect rate. So I'd probably push the sample size up a bit. Normally we'd be 30 to 50. I would push the sample size up three or 400, observe the defect rate, and I would use that. You know, people say, well, I don't want to make three or 400 test pieces. That's the cheapest, that's the cheapest production you're ever going to make because at that point, it's three or 400 pieces. When you get into production and you make 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 with high attritional defect rates, the cost to your business at that point, trying to please the customer, trying to be on time in full, you got customers on the phone saying, where the bloody hell is my order? Why are you late again and again and again? The money you lose by not running the three or 400 is massive compared to the money you'll save in getting a good 
estimate. So the answer to your question, what do I do? You're trying to get a good estimate. That's all CPK and PPK is trying to do. It's trying to estimate the defect rate for you so you don't switch your machine on and have a surprise. You're asking yourself, is it a good estimate? Is it sufficient to make a decision? And if the answer is yes, use any one you like. Fit the normal, fit the viable, fit the log normal, but definitely avoid transformations because that blinds you to, to whether your estimate is any good or not. I hope that answers your question. I think it's definitely food for thought. People do get this problem. This is my favorite one. I just take the, take the zero away from here, let the normal just create a, a pattern. Usually this tail is still a good estimate of what's going on, and then I can just use the normal. And if anybody asks me, I can explain, hey, it's an estimate of the defect rate. Do you think that data looks like that tail? Yes or no? Yes. Well, that 8% defect rate is going to kill us. So let's stop arguing about the numbers. Let's put the problem right. Let's go live with a fantastic product and let's make a bucket load of cash.